What is up guys? It is the Turtle Girl. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about some safe, non-toxic plants you can try with your aquatic turtle. Keyword being try because, full disclosure, I have kept live plants with my aquatic turtles. Uh, but if you look in the tank behind me, I do not still have aquatic plants with my turtle. So I'm just gonna give you some ideas of what can be safe, but bear in mind that if you have a turtle that's more herbivorous, herbivorous, oh, I always say that word wrong, that's more of a plant eater, a lot of sliders, painted turtles, cooters, you just really don't have, I won't say any shot of having a nice planted tank, but it's very, very difficult to achieve that because the turtles will either eat the plants because they think it's food or they just are so big and bulky and just destroy everything it's very much a game of trial and error and if your turtle doesn't like plants then it just it doesn't like plants but if you're looking to venture into this world i have some safe plant options for you to try out with your aquatic turtle also note that the majority of the plants i'm about to mention are mainly aimed and focused at indoor aquariums like glass tanks because when you're looking at ponds there's a lot more different things you can do and oftentimes it's easier to grow actual pond plants in a pond big surprise but for the purposes of this video I'm focusing on indoor planted aquariums with turtles first we'll talk about plants that go inside the tank and then we'll talk about floating plants okay so for inside the tank my top two recommendations would be Anubius and Java fern the reason I always suggest these is because they are medium to low light very resilient and hardy plants. Like even if you don't have a green thumb, most people can keep an Anubius or a Java fern alive. These are rhizome plants, so you don't actually have to bury them in the substrate, which is great because most turtle keepers aren't using gravel or some kind of substrate that's really ideal for planted tanks. So with Anubius and Java fern, you can just take their rhizome and super glue it to a piece of wood, or you can keep it inside the plant pot, or you can just like attach it with some string to a rock. Anubius in particular has these really thick and durable leaves that can withstand a fair amount of damage, I would say. And that is the plant I've actually had the most success with uh, until the turtles ate it. Next up are some root feeding plants and that would be Valisneria and Amazon Swords. Valisneria in particular grows really, really quickly. If you have a good substrate, it'll just send out runners and grow like crazy. In no time, you'll have a jungle of these long, skinny leaves reaching up to the surface of the aquarium. And if your turtle eats it, it's not a big deal. The tricky part with these is that if your turtle uproots them, it's basically game over. They're not gonna do very well just floating in the water column. There are also column feeder plants that don't necessarily need to be rooted in order to thrive. So things like hornwort, moneywort, anacharis, all of these can be planted in the substrate, but they can also be grown free floating, which granted can sometimes make a mess if you don't have them rooted to anything. But if you're just looking for something to add some more cover to your tank and absorb some of those nutrients from the waste that your turtle is producing, these might be a cool option to look into. These are pretty fast growing and can also be considered pretty high light if you put a really bright light on them that'll also help with their growth so just make sure you have like a dedicated light above the aquarium that can help these plants balance out like the nutrients they're intaking and then the light that's helping them photosynthesize and grow sorry my voice also excuse my voice if it sounds weird i'm a little bit like allergies and stuffed up under the weather but we're making this video anyway we're powering through um also in this category, you could also consider water sprite. This can also be rooted or free floating. But again, just some more green, some more natural for your tank. If your turtle eats it, at least they're not gonna get sick. <laughs> now I wanna quickly interject before we go on to floating plants. Keep in mind that when you have plants in an aquarium that are free floating, so either column feeders or floating plants, like we're gonna talk about in a second, they do have like roots and leaves right that can get caught in the filter and so if you want to avoid clogging that you might want to look into something like a pre-filter so that those leaves and stuff won't get stuck in the intake but rather in the pre-filter let me know if you guys would want like a separate video on that um, i can also link in the description below some pre-filters you can check out it's basically just like a sponge or something you put on the outside of your intake so that it doesn't get immediately clogged up by stuff floating around in the tank. Okay, floating plants. There are a handful, namely duckweed, water lettuce, salvinia, and Amazon frogbit. There are other plants 
that kind of venture more into the pond plant territory they get really really big but i'm mainly focusing on plants that can be used in like an indoor glass aquarium so those would be the four that i would mention duckweed is definitely really small little floating plants tiny little leaves and if your turtle isn't eating it it can quickly overtake a tank salvinia and amazon frogbit are both a little bit bigger than duckweed and they still have kind of that standard leaf shape but salvinia has this kind of rough texture i've heard someone describe it as like a cat's tongue but Salvinia just has this rough texture, whereas Frogbit is a little more durable. And then finally, Water Lettuce. They call it that because it looks like a little tiny head of lettuce. And this is a little bit bigger than the other two previously mentioned and can get a lot bigger if given the space. But these have root systems that just go down into the water and really soak up all of those nutrients. And hey, they do make a good snack if your turtle does eat them. So it might be worth trying out some floating plants. Again, like I said, just be aware uh, how this could affect your water flow and the current and potentially, you know, clog up your filter. Just bear that in mind when you are trying floating plants. So those are just a handful of plant ideas you could try for a turtle tank. Please let me know your success in the comments down below. I know my musk turtles could probably handle a bit more plants. I just really have yet to try it. So let me know what your guys' experiences are down in the comments below. Also, because I know I'm gonna get a question about Lucky Bamboo, don't use Lucky Bamboo in your aquarium because it can be potentially toxic to turtles. Pothos as well, but a lot of times I use this in my filter for the same benefits of a plant as far as like taking the nutrients out, but so that my turtle doesn't have access to it because Pothos can potentially be toxic. Anyway, all that being said, if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye!